<laughs> Listen, this morning we are going to start the journey of obedience to the Holy Spirit and why certain things can be broken or cannot be broken until we learn to obey. Till we learn to obey the Holy Spirit. Some things will never be broken in our lives until we learn, until we learn to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Some stuff just ain't going to stop, folks. There's not going to be a go around. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a, a moment where you can say, well, you know, I didn't know no better or, no, no, we are in a season now where we must be spirit informed, spirit infused, spirit engineered believers. That's good. Spirit engineered. Hallelujah. Good morning to my Zoomers. Good morning. We are in a season now where I'm telling you everything. Good morning, JJ. Good morning, Lisa Owens. Good morning, Carolyn Ann Barnes. Good evening, good afternoon. Hey, Tracy Reynolds and the team out there. I love y'all. So excited about uh, um, pa my pastor and, and her husband, Emmett. So excited. Thank God. I've watched God do some amazing things. Listen, folks, Pastor Gerald Folsom, Vanita Towns. Y'all don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, this is, listen, you don't want to miss this. Spirit engineered believers, spirit engineered, spirit empowered, spirit engineered believers, spirit empowered believers, spirit informed believers, spirit designed believers. That that's that's where we're going. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. Spirit engineered, spirit designed, spirit informed. That we are actually at that hour in our journeys where we must be spirit engineered, spirit, spirit filled. Yes, but spirit driven, spirit led, spirit engineered, spirit formed, spirit sensitive believers. Jesus Christ is our Savior, Jade on Purpose. Good morning, Mickey Love. Those of you coming in on Instagram as we're sharing, share, share, share on Instagram as we are sharing that we are coming to a place where we must be spirit obedient. Spirit obedient, that we must be spirit obedient believers. And that we will not settle for anything less in our own lives. That we will not compromise our obedience. That we will not rationalize our obedience. That we will not justify our disobedience. I just want to say something to us today that that this is, this is going to be one of the greatest moves. And I'm watching it in different places. I'm watching Holy Spirit grab leaders and get their attention about Holy Spirit. I'm watching how Holy Spirit is causing leadership to be more aware, to be more sensitive, to be more pliable, more flexible. And everybody, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what race, what ethnicity, what background, what denomination. I'm watching how spirit, the spirit of God is causing men and women, boys and girls, girls and boys, women and men to be more alert, more aware. That song says, make me aware of your presence, Lord. Make me more aware of your presence, Lord. Let, let me become more aware of your presence. 
Spirit obedient believers. Good morning, Sandra Robinson. Good morning, Miss Gate 62. Good morning, Mickey. God bless you, Dream. God bless you. Thank you, Junior Enterprise. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for joining us, MSCAT. Thank you, Spirit obedient, Spirit engineer, Spirit empowered believers. Spirit aware, Spirit sensitive. And and holy, and God wants, God wants us uh, to be obedient to him by the spirit of God. But he doesn't want us to have to be uh, gritting our teeth, you know, and use our willpower. It, 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 he doesn't want our obedience to be, oh, I'm supposed to, you know, I'm, I'm just supposed, why do you do it? Because I'm supposed to. No, he wants our obedience to be spirit powered. Uh, out of love, out out of our joy, of of um, hearing and obeying what God says to us, and that we are mastering our emotions, that we are mastering our emotions of anger and frustration, because that is the fruit of the Spirit of God, and so. Holy Spirit has given us the power to overcome impatience, to overcome frustration, um, that rushing, that anxiety that comes over all of us. You know, um, yesterday I, I um, just, you know, been rolling and running and, and doing some things and Holy Spirit said, just take a minute, you know, just take a minute and breathe in, take a minute and just breathe in. Good morning, Vita. Good morning, Jay. Uh, Elder Martha Boggs. Good morning, Pastor Rita Swain, Dr. Tangerine, and Pastor Dr. Gregory. Amen. Come on in. So, uh, Apollonia, amen. God bless you, young apostle, evangelist, oily, oily woman of God. Lisa, uh, Pastor Freeman. Good morning, Wanda Sue. Good morning, Bianca. Good morning. Uh, so, it, we shouldn't be obeying because, okay, it's, it's, it's just... Um, what I'm supposed to do. No, it should be spirit led, spirit driven, spirit empowered, spirit infused. And so our obedience to God should be out of our love for God. Just take a moment and allow Holy Spirit to shape our obedience. Now, a lot of things that we have talked about, uh, even, even, uh, as we are studying our lesson uh, in deliverance and healing, when you go back and look at the portals that were opened, they were open because we chose to obey our emotions and not obey Holy Spirit. And so those, those things that come into our lives, not all the time is it started out by demonic witches and warlocks and it is, it is open because of our disobedience. I want someone to put in the chat, portals are opened by my disobedience. Portals. And, 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 and I want you to own that. I want you to own that my disobedience, my disobedience opens portals. Now, what is a portal? A portal is an access point. A portal is an access point. Good morning, Chris, Chris. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Good morning, Nell. Good morning. Good morning, Cheryl Ingram. Absolutely. Uh, those of you that are coming in, dying with sweet. Come on. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, portals are opened by my disobedience. Now, what is a portal? So when we're dealing with deliverance and we're dealing with life and we're dealing with the reasons why certain things occur, you have to go to what we call the root, the beginning. And so portals are open, gates are open, access points. And if you were honest, if you are honest, if you are honest, I love that Spence. Hey, is that apostle? Hey, hey, Shook. That's my sweet apostle. God bless you this morning. I'm so proud. I don't know what's going on down there, but I'm coming to see down there in the Charlotte area. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, Dr. Stillman, go out and come back in again. She said that the uh, the is breaking up. Um, 
So um, when we go into why or how we get into certain spaces, let's go back and examine a portal. Now, here's the thing I know about, about portals and about deliverance and about spaces where we um, sometimes don't understand how we got there. So a choice is never associated with a consequence. By the time we get to the dimension of consequence, we have most times forgot the choice we made. All right. So go with me. Go, go with me. Come on, Pastor John Davis, Overseer Lenita, Wanda Sue. Let's go. Brenda Jennings. Let's go. Coming up the timeline. <laughs> Monica say, I did it my way. Come on. And so <clears throat> when we deal with um, consequences, we don't often remember the choice that brought the consequence. We, we come to a place where we, we're, we're, we're so in the momentum of what we, what we are doing, what we're living that we don't associate a consequence with a choice. I need, I need someone to really, really, really. <laughs> the chief, good morning, chief. And good morning, April. And good morning, uh, Alan. Good morning, y'all, my folks, my babies. And uh, she said, we, we, don't, we don't remember. We, we forgot our choice that brought the drama because we don't associate, Dr. Dr. James, we don't associate the consequence with the choice, all right? Now, that choice that brought the drama, that now we are living out the consequence is guaranteed, guaranteed an area where we made a decision to willfully disobey the urgings of Holy Spirit. I, I need you to hear this. Portals are open because of my disobedience. And it's easy to blame people. It's easy to say, well, they did that. Good morning, uh, Mary. God bless you, Shalom, Meshach, miracles, signs, and wonders. <laughs> so write this down. Choices, write this down, are long-lasting and life-changing. I need you to hear this. Choices are long-lasting and life-changing. All right? Now, and thank you, Philip. God bless you, baby. Listen to me carefully. And so God in his wisdom. I, now, now I'm going to say something, but I don't want you to get offended. And it, you know, you're going to be all right. But walk with me. God gave us his spirit. To lead us and guide us. Now, I know that there's a lot of emphasis on the Bible. Go with me, go with me. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm about to step on one of your sacred cows. But God did not give us the Bible. I need you to hear me because I'm, I'm, I'm going to hurt some feelings. I'm going to hurt some feelings. God didn't give us the Bible. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> God did not give us the Bible. God gave us his spirit. He said, my spirit will lead you. My spirit will guide you. Listen, there is too much of a, a margin of error that God would would make us rely on our scripture knowledge. Strap in, John, because I... <laughs> listen to me, listen to me, Dr. Hope. 
and, and I know that there's a lot of emphasis on you got to learn the word, you got to read the word, you got to know the word, you got to pray the word, you got to you got to live the word, you got to do. I, I I get that. I, I get that. I know, <laughs> Bishop Jackson. Y'all y'all better come get me because I I want to say something that is going to shake you into the reality of why you keep disobeying the Holy Spirit. Your word knowledge, your word knowledge will never compare to the wisdom of Holy Spirit. Your word knowledge, your word knowledge will never compare to the wisdom of Holy Spirit. My scripture knowledge, my scripture uh, 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 knowledge is never going to compare to my obedience to Holy Spirit. He did not give us a Bible. He gave us his spirit. Come on, Dr. Skillman. He gave us his spirit to lead us. He gave us his spirit to guide us. He gave us his spirit to inform us, to infuse us, to convict us. He gave us his spirit. I will not leave you in the hands of the Bible. I will leave you with the paracletos. Ooh, because whatever you know in the Bible will never, it's always subject to interpretation. It's always subject to hermeneutics. It's always subject to your own personal perspectives and environment and culture. Ooh. <laughs> he said, so I will not leave you in the hands of a Bible. I will give you my spirit and he will lead you. Come on, he will guide you. He will inform you of truth. He is the spirit of truth. He will guide you. He, oh, shade on my Whoa, glory to God. He. And so when we come to a place of accepting the wisdom of Holy Spirit, the guidance of Holy Spirit, when we understand that even the scriptures were breathed out by the spirit of God, when we understand the author of the scriptures, listen, I'm teaching good. You're not going to like me. And if any of my professors are on, I know you ain't going to like it, but I'm telling the truth. And I understand the emphasis in, in school to put on scriptures and to make sure we exergete it properly, to make sure that the science of hermeneutics is applied appropriately. I get it. But I've been to countries and nations where Bibles are not allowed. I have sat in the midst of thousands who have never read a Bible, never seen a Bible. I have sat in the midst of thousands, my God, where just bringing a page of the Bible is all I could bring in because there is such a restriction on the book. That's why he said, I will not leave you without help, without a paraclete. Woo, glory to God. And so when we fail to obey Holy Spirit when we do it our way instead of doing it by the Spirit, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. It is my Spirit 
that opens your eyes to behold the glory of the Lord. It is by my spirit that I draw you into intimacy. It's by my spirit. Ooh, <laughs> he gave us his spirit for guidance, the suitable helper, the parakletos. Yes. And I want you to hear me good. You're trying to know the Bible and don't know the Holy Spirit. You're trying to learn the scriptures without spirit revelation. And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> come on here, Monica. Let me make a course correction. I, I Come on, Vandela. Listen, listen. It is the letter that kill it, but it's the spirit that make it alive. My word is spirit. My word is life. My word is spirit. My word is life. And there are too many spaces that we get into. There is no scripture. There is no book, no verse, no chapter. And so we must attune our ear and our hearts to the obedience of God's spirit. He left us in the hands of his spirit. Glory, 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 glory. I know preachers that know the Bible, but don't know Holy Spirit. I'm sat in classes where they knew Greek and Hebrew, Latin, come on now, could read it from the text, but no clue who Holy Spirit is. They can out text me, but they can't out preach me. They can out text me, but they can't out preach me. Y'all not saying nothing. <laughs> and so when, when we talk about drama, and we talk about consequences and we talk about the real life in real time, day-to-day -day events of our life. You're going to have not memorize scripture, not that you're going to have to attune your ear to God's spirit. God's spirit. I want to teach you something. I want you to hear this, the, the frequency of Holy Spirit is a much higher frequency. Come on, somebody. A much higher frequency. It's a bit, it's a greater space. It's a larger discernment. Now, when I think of a GPS, come on, Pastor Blocker. When I think of a, 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 a GPS, the global positioning uh, system. <laughs> When, when, when I think of that, I, I think of this, this navigational tool that gives us event by event. Now, you don't have to know where you're going. If you think about a GPS, the global positioning system, you don't have to know where you're going. You may have never gone there before. And the global positioning system, the GPS, is going to give you turn by turn. It's going to give you distance. It's going to give you how many feet. It's going to give you where accidents are, where the police are. And you don't have to know where you're going. You have never gone there before. But you are, you are relying on the knowledge that is already in the GPS, all right? So God does not require us to know where we're going. He doesn't require us to know everything about everything. He only requires us to rely on the frequency and the instructions of Holy Spirit. Somebody said, and the Holy Spirit will even give you the time of arrival. Come on, absolutely. Will tell you exactly what time you're going to arrive. Wow. So you don't have to know where you're going. You don't have to figure that out. You don't have to figure that out. 
and the data is updated at all times. <laughs> and so when we are learning to rely on Holy Spirit, we have to rest in the fact that he has the most recent updated data for our life. We have to rely on that. We have to trust Holy Spirit blow by blow, turn by turn. Now, the challenge is not, is Holy Spirit right? We know Holy Spirit is right. The challenge is, am I going to obey Holy Spirit? That the challenge is not, does Holy Spirit know? We know that. We know Holy Spirit is God. <laughs> we, we know that Holy Spirit is God's uh, positioning system, his GPS, his spiritual, his spiritual positioning center to position us where we should be, when we should arrive, that we don't get there too early, we don't get there too late. We know that the GPS is right. The data is right. Now, some of you still fight that. Some of you say, oh, I'm not going that way. I'm not. And I've learned, me, that I need to follow this thing because Holy Spirit knows what I don't know. My GPS is updated every second. So the turns and the roadblocks and the road construction it is updated so the way i went the last time if the gps is guiding me a new way i need to go that way because even though i'm more familiar with the other way there's something going on over there that i currently don't know now here, here it is. Holy Spirit is our GPS, God's positioning system. And when we choose to make our own route, we open a portal every time. Now, you're not going to like this. But every time you disobey, God's GPS, something dies. A portal gets open, an access point. Now, at that very moment, you may not experience a consequence. You may not experience it. You may not experience it for another year. You may not experience it for months to come. See, consequences and choices. We forget the choice. And by the time the consequence shows up, Monica, by the time the consequence shows up, we forgot the choice that we made to go around the, 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 the locating power of Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something, even when you are using ways or you're using another system, listen, the, the, the turnaround is already built into it. Go, go make a U-turn, go, go recalculating where even when you miss your turn. Why? Now, the spirit of the living God is constantly driving God's purpose in our lives constantly. And so all we have to do is follow. All we have to do is follow. We don't want to obey folks. And this is a problem in the body of Christ. We don't want to obey. We make up every reason and every excuse why we don't obey. And I'm telling you now, these portals are open. When these 
portals are open. Now we have given access to other spirits that we don't know why we're being tormented by, why are we being molested by this? Why are we doing this? I'm grown. I did it my way. I did it the way I wanted to do it. And I get that. But there's always something that dies. Now, you have a period of time called grace where you can correct your route. You can make the course correction. But we in our arrogance won't allow Holy Spirit to recalibrate our route. We'll just go the wrong way and know we're going the wrong way and know we're in disobedience. Now, what God has for you is in the pathway of righteousness. You will never be able to get the will of God in the pathway of unrighteousness, in the pathway of your choice. You will struggle. You will, you will live in poverty and lack. You will never have the right connections. You will never get to your place of destiny. You will always have some type of enemy around your neck because you choose by your will to disobey Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to look at this text and I know we know it, but I want you to look at this and it grabbed me in Acts chapter number five, verse three, and Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm telling you. Listen, why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? Why do we lie? Why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? Why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? Now, we have choice, Pastor Colbert. We have options. Why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? Why do we test the Holy Spirit? Why do we lie to the Spirit of God? Why do we lie? Why do we disobey Holy Spirit? Why do we test Holy Spirit? Why do we do this? What, what is it about us that makes us believe that we're smarter, that we're wiser than the Spirit of God? Why? And when these portals are open, sickness, disease, Death, poverty, uh, 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 loneliness, barrenness. Why do we lie? I was talking to a young lady the other day and God has blessed her and delivered her. Praise God. I introduced her to the Holy Spirit and oh my God, she's just blowing up. And she had made a decision in her life. She called it the sin of choice. I never heard that before. I... <laughs> I never heard, I'm just going to do it because it's my sin of choice. I never heard that before. That was something. <laughs> Alpha said, because we think we can get over. Wow. Wow. And, and so I was talking to her the other day and just shared with her. And she said, that was my sin of choice. I said, but do you see how ridiculous that sounds? My sin of choice. So I'm just going to sin. And I'm going, to, I'm going to lie to the spirit of God. And I'm, because this is my sin of choice. <laughs> hey. Woo! Barrenness. Barrenness, Pastor John. Barrenness. Barrenness. When we come to that place, why do we lie about holy? Why do we lie to the, why do we test Holy Spirit? Now watch this. You all know this story in Acts 5. Ananias comes in. He and his wife have sold some land 
and they conspired that they are going to shred the apostles. They have conspired together as a husband and wife that they are going to trick Holy Spirit. They're going to trick the apostles. They're going to bring a portion of their money and their tithe. And they're going to lie and say that they actually gave it all. When they just could have said, you know, we sold the land for five million. We're not going to give you, you know, 500,000. We're only going to give you 250,000. But no, the apostle by the spirit discerned and called them out on it and said, now, wait. <laughs> he said, you've kept back part of the proceeds. And you only brought a certain part to lay it at my feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the spirit of God and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? I'm in verse four of Acts five. You have not lied to men, but to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. <laughs> Why would you do, why do we lie? Watch this. Three hours later, verse seven, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Now watch this. So Peter, by the gift of discernment, he asked, did you sell the land for 500 million? And she said, yes, we did. Now, it was a lie. It was a lie. So Peter said, watch this. Verse 9, how is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of God? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in, found her dead, carried her out, and buried her by her husband. <laughs> Why do we lie to Holy Spirit? Why do we test Holy Spirit? Why? Why do you lie to the Holy Ghost? Now, I'm not even talking about just general lying. Let me tell you what I'm specifically talking about. Because I'm not talking about just general lies. I'm not talking about general lies. I'm talking about lying to the Spirit of God. What do you mean, Bishop? Holy Spirit tells you to do something specific. He whispers in your ear. He communicates to you, Mary Williams coming in. He communicates to you, don't eat that. Don't put that in your mouth. Don't say that. Don't go there. Pay attention. Be wise. Lock your door. Turn that off. Close your eyes, leave, stay. Listen to me carefully. I'm not talking about you lying about your age. I'm not talking about you lying about, I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with specific Holy Spirit guided instructions that you choose to disobey. And when you choose to disobey and you know you heard, you know you, you heard it, do you realize that you are lying to the Holy Spirit? You're just going to do it anyway. Now, watch this. So now these portals get open in our lives. 
Now we have these portals that are open. Now we have these portals. Watch this. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't come in your space. It comes in your children. It comes in your children's children. Okay. Sometimes the consequences on your job or it's in your relationship or it's in your ministry. It's in your finances. But there is always going to be a consequence. It's always going to be a consequence. Now, why do we lie to the Holy Spirit? Why do we test Holy Spirit? Then, now watch this. Then you come and you want us to pray for you. I was praying for a young man many years ago. And he was manifesting all kinds of sickness and all kinds of things. And the doctors couldn't get him healed. And there was just a lot going on. And when he came in front of me, as I was praying with him, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, ask him of his disobedience. And so I asked him, I said, what, 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 what is it that the spirit of God is dealing with me about? He's asking me to ask you of your disobedience. Do you know anything about that? No, no, I don't. I said, okay. Now, trust me, when you're standing in front of a person and the spirit of the Lord is using the gifts to discern what's going on, you, you can't get around it, right? So I dig a little deeper and I said, now, nah. is how long you've been sick? And he told me. And I said, when did the sickness come upon you? He told me. And we're standing at the altar and I'm talking to him. I don't have the mic <coughs> in his mouth, but we're just talking. <coughs> and the spirit of the Lord asked me again, good morning, then Jonathan. Good morning, coming in. Good morning, evangelist. Uh, 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 when, when I started digging into it, I could see, it looked like about an 11 or 12 year old person. And I said, I see this little 11, 12 year old guy. He's standing in the kitchen. And I see you. It looks like you're stealing food. It looks like you're stealing food. Is this you? And he laughed. He said, yeah, that was me. And I said, okay. I said, why were you stealing food? And he said, because my mom didn't want me to eat after a certain hour. And so I would eat at the right time. And then I would go back because I was still hungry. And I said, okay. I said, do you realize that that was disobedience? He said, no, I was just a kid. I said, no, 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 that's disobedience. And I said, now I'm going to ask you again. Can you point to the areas of your disobedience? Now, this took about 15, 20 minutes. I'm at the altar ministry. And by the time it came out, as he was confessing it, let me tell you what began to happen. His body started getting healed. I never laid hands on him. As he started talking about stealing, as he started talking, just stealing food, it morphed into something where he was a thief. Now he was stealing money. He was stealing different items from the job. He was stealing certain things from his family members and as he, he and and then he began to see how that child had now become a man now the sickness in his body was because he had opened these portals i said are you baptized in the holy spirit he said i am i said do you do you hear holy spirit talking to you yes he said i hear him all the time i said why don't you obey Now, as he began to confess what was going on in his life, his body started straightening up. His body started to heal right in front of our eyes. And as the more, the more he confessed, then the spirit of God touched him. He repented. He began to repent 
Now, what happened? Those portals started to close. Ooh, oh my God, I need you to hear me good. I need you to hear me. When, when these portals get open because of our disobedience, Sometimes it takes years, years to close those portals. Woo, go, 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 go. Come on, come on. Come on now. Now, Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to God. They lied to the spirit of God. And we do the same thing. Many of you are carrying hurt. You are lying about it. You, you want it to be somebody else's fault. No, you, you are going to have to forgive. And Holy Spirit has spoken to you about forgiveness. But you are not walking in the obedience of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit has spoken to you about your money, about your finances. I want to I want to say this because the Spirit of the Lord is on me to say it. Holy Spirit has spoken to you about your tithing. And you have come to a decision not to tithe. You have made a decision not to tithe. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By the spirit of God, God has spoken to you about tithing. And he has, he has spoken to you more than one time. And you still refuse not to tithe. You are lying to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're lying to the Holy Spirit at every opportunity. Every chance you get to tithe, you don't tithe. You choose to not tithe. Holy Spirit is speaking to some of you about what you entertain yourself with. How you are entertaining yourself. Oh, I hear this in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, Rabbi Kianda, Pastor Tawana said, I promise I was thinking about time. Many of you, Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You have gotten to a place where you are relying on your own emotions about your money, about your giving. You are not a tither, not because Holy Spirit has not spoken to you, but you have chosen to disobey. I would go even as far as to say, Holy Spirit has spoken to some of you that you're supposed to be tithing to this ministry. You're not, you're not in a church. You're eating here, but you won't do it. Listen to me. Some of you, Holy Spirit is speaking to you about the way you entertain yourself. What you watch, what you hear, what it is that, that, that you put before your eyes and what it is that you put in front of your ear gates and your heart gate and you continue to disobey Holy Spirit. Ooh, Holy Spirit has spoken to us. Holy Spirit is speaking to you even about what you put in your mouth. I'm talking about the things by the Spirit of God that he is speaking. Holy Spirit is speaking all the time. Holy Spirit is giving you directions. She said, my consumptions, my appetites, I see you. Come on. Holy Spirit is speaking to you about how you pleasure yourself. He is speaking to you about how you have are trying to design yourself away from his design. And because you 
didn't die the moment or you haven't lost anything yet, you don't realize the portals that are open. And when those portals don't get closed, there is a point, a day, and a time when you will be consumed by your own disobedience. <laughs> oh, come on, come on now. Some of you say, oh, I'm just sick and I pray for God. God said, I done already told you how to be healed. I have already told you how to be healed. I've already told you how to be prosperous. I've already told you and I keep warning you. I keep warning you. I keep warning you. I keep warning you about the bitterness in your heart. I keep warning you about how you see my people. Some of you have a bad taste in your mouth for God's people. You have a bad taste in your mouth for God's people. But you must realize that they are God's people. That every person is created in the image of God. And you have a bad taste in your mouth regarding people, God's people. And he said, I've checked you once and I've checked you twice. Some of you I've checked three times. And I'm telling you now, folks, you want to close those portals. Our obedience to Holy Spirit is paramount for our success while we're here in the earth. Oh, God. You are taking too many risks. You are opening too many gates and too many doors because you don't want to obey Holy Spirit. And so you are lying to Holy Spirit. Come on, Vita. Come on, Alfred. We are making too many decisions. We are living by, by, the, by the seat of our pants. We are doing things our own way. We are crafting things in our own image. I hear you, Holy Spirit. The spirit of idolatry is alive and well. Woo! The spirit of idolatry is alive and well. What do you mean, Bishop? I don't know. I'm just hearing by the spirit of God that many of you are crafting things in your own image. You are designing everything in your own image. You are crafting. You are designing. You are birthing things in your own image. It has nothing to do with God. There's no God in it. No God on it. No God through it. And no God will come out of it. You are an idolater. You are building images to yourself. You're building ministries to yourself. Everything is about you. You are building in your business to yourself. And God says, thou shall have no other gods before me, not even the God you build. You better hear this today. You better hear this today. You are building it in your own image. You want it to work, but you don't want it to work for God. You want it to be said you did it. He said, but it is the Lord your God that gives you power to get wealth. You are building things to your own image. He says, and idolatry is a stench in my nostrils. You shall have no graven images before you. You shall not create things in your own image and after your lust and after your passions come on here that's what happened when Moses went up on the mountain and was in the presence of God the people got anxious and started creating their own God started creating their own deity and that is what we're doing we're doing it in our own name and we're using the name of God we're saying God told us but then we don't want to wait on the pattern we don't want to wait on the instruction the blow by blow instruction of Holy Spirit so we get out our clay we get out our vessels and start building it in our own image and then we are shocked when God destroys it 
And then we are stunned that God took it from us. And then we are mad and angry because God rebuked it and caused it to die. Because we don't want to obey Holy Spirit. And that is why many of us Many that we know. I was praying for someone. A lady came to me. She said, I want you to pray for this. And I started praying for it. And the Spirit of the Lord stopped me right in the middle of the service and said, don't you pray another prayer. And this mother has prayed for years. He said, I cannot move because of that person's choice to be disobedient to me. We are praying witchcraft prayers. We want God to override people's disobedience and bless them. We want God to override people's disobedience and heal them. We want God to override people's disobedience and prosper them. No, no, God says, I'm not a punk. I'm not a chump. I'm a righteous God. If you are obedient and willing, you will eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you fail to obey, we don't want, we don't want, we don't want it. We don't want it. We wonder why life is so hard. Why the devil is doing it. No, your disobedience is what opens the portals and gives access to the enemy. I was, I, I just, listen, I got to go, but I got to tell you this. We have got to correct right now the way we choose to rebel against Holy Spirit. I remember when I was in my foolishness. I was in my foolishness. <laughs> I was in my foolishness. Oh, child. I was I was young and 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 halfway smart and halfway cute and rising up the corporate ladder as a nurse, working for the government, working in the job corps as the center nurse, but I was just, I was disobedient. I was smoking and drinking and hanging out with the dudes. And I was, I was, I was careless, very careless. I remember one time my, my children asked me, well, why, my, how did you get cancer? This is way back in 1974. I, I said, my disobedience, my disobedience opened the door for that. Oh my God, I'm telling you. Woo, you, 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 you're foolish sometimes and you just callous. And I never missed a day of church all my life. I've never not been to church. I never, from the day my mama had me to this present moment. So it wasn't that I wasn't in church. It wasn't that I wasn't hearing the word. It wasn't that I didn't have the boundaries of my parents. I just chose to be disobedient. Watch this. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Isaiah 1. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. 18. Come. Now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skins are your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool that's white. If you are willing, verse 19, and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. That's health, wealth, favor, influence, impact, anointings. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Woo, we're going to deal with this. We're shutting some portals. We're closing some gateways. We're going to shut up this access to our lives, to our health, to our finance, to our wisdom, to our impact. We're going to shut it down. How, Bishop? By learning to obey Holy Spirit. Whew. I got to go. <laughs> Woo! 
My prayer for you is that you will hear his voice each moment of this day. My prayer for you now is that you will learn even now, glory to God, to bless him in all things, that you will learn now to hear his voice every moment of this day and that you will not choose to go the opposite way of the leading of Holy Spirit. Don't grit your teeth and obey. Lovingly, sweetly yield. I'm telling you, it will bless your life. It will bless the life of those around you. Your seed and your seed seed will be blessed. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> I got to go. I love y'all. Don't miss this week. Jump on this. We are closing portals and we're shutting down gates because of our own disobedience to the precious Holy Spirit of God. I got to go. I love y'all. Oh, get ready to be healed. Get ready to prosper. Get ready for joy. Get ready.